Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Faith and Friends. I'm Andy Lynch, Mark Kuntz on the end, Jennifer Beck in the middle. As we are excited for today's show <laughs> and the entire, look at how excited she is for the week. <laughs> you do just like October. I do like October. It's beautiful. It's not too cold most of the time. <laughs> Sometimes it's a little cold, but yes, October is, is a splendid month Apple to be excited. Cider. You get fall weather, you start getting the like, sweaters out, maybe have a fire bonfires, all sorts of that traditional fun stuff, and also means it's time to start thinking about packing up shoeboxes for Operation Christmas Child. More details coming up later in the show, including an inspiring interview with a shoebox recipient. Wow. We're also going to tell you about the fuse. It's happening right here in Lima next week, plus some exciting news for a former TV44 producer and videographer. I look forward to that and some exciting news for a few current TV44 employees. As you can see, Zach is not with us, but We'll have more on why in a moment. First, our most important portion of today's show, the scripture verse from Matthew chapter 25, verses 35 through 40. It says, For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly, I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. Well, that notion of serving Christ through serving the less fortunate can be reflect, reflected greatly in the annual Samaritan Purse Operation Christmas Child Shoebox Project. Thousands from right here in this region put their love and prayers into packing a shoebox that we sent somewhere overseas to a child in need. Well, again this year, TV44 will serve as one of the 3,500 shoebox drop-off sites in the United States. Have you ever wondered if the box you pack truly makes a difference? Watch this short video and then Mark introduces us to a young woman who speaks firsthand about the message of hope and love that can come from a simple shoebox. When you pack a shoebox full of gifts for Operation Christmas Child, your love is limitless. You never know where that shoebox will go or how it will get there or who will celebrate its arrival, but God does. Your shoebox could dare a child to dream. It could heal a broken heart. It could change a child's life forever. Give a gift of limitless love. Well, it is almost that time of the year once again for Operation Christmas Child, and we are joined now by Todd Edwards, the regional manager for Operation Christmas Child in Arena Creek, who uh, was one of the recipients of that Limitless Love, uh, a shoebox that you received many years ago. And it, it's kind of an amazing story how a simple shoebox with a couple of simple items really turned your life around. That's right. So you were 11 years old? I was actually 10 years old while I was living in an orphanage in Russia. And, you know, people throw things in these shoeboxes and maybe not even realizing how much an impact a, a simple hair clip or a, a pencil sharpener can make on someone's life. That's right. It was one of my favorite items was a pencil sharpener because it was in the shape of a dinosaur. I thought it was so interesting. Never seen anything like it. And, of course, through that shoebox, you found about the love of Jesus Christ. That's right. Missionaries brought these gifts saying that it represents the gift of Jesus. And so began my relationship with the Lord with a simple shoebox. And Todd, while Irina's story is unique to her, it's, it's a similar story you hear all the time from Operation Christmas Child. Actually, we do. I mean, when you think of the over 113 million shoeboxes that have been distributed in 130 countries around the world, her story is unique to her, but this story is reoccurring all around the world. So, phenomenal. Where did Operation Christmas Child get its beginning? Well, in the United States, uh, in 1993, Franklin Graham was asked to see how many shoeboxes he could collect from the Americans to be sent to war-torn Bosnia. And they just expected uh, maybe a few thousand and they ended up with 26,000. So a pastor from Wales who actually began the project, he said, Franklin Graham, you're welcome to take this on. And 
ever since then, it's, it's history, right? Uh, we're still collecting shoeboxes every year to the tune of nearly 10 million this past season and hopefully going over that this year. Mm -hmm. And Irina, as an adult now, why are you so involved with Operation Christmas Child? Obviously it made a huge impact in your life many years ago, but, but now you're continuing on with that ministry. Well, that's right. Uh, the need is great for hope around the world. And I now have this hope, but the fact is my orphanage is still filled with 150 kids. And around the world, people just don't know that they can be adopted by this Lord and Savior. So it's our responsibility to share, and Operation Christmas Child is one way we can do that. And personally, it impacted me very much, so it's my joy to share. As you tell people your story, do you get surprised reactions from folks when, when they hear how, how the shoebox made a difference in your life? Yes, actually, there are people who have packed a shoebox for many years, and I think uh, it's a good uh, reminder that, yes, they are going to children, and God is doing incredible things with the shoebox. It, Todd, obviously there's a lot of folks that are involved in the Operation Christmas Child from the Billy, from the, the Franklin Graham level all the way down to the volunteers. It's, it's really the volunteers that really make this a success. Oh my, Mark, over 500,000 volunteers around the world make this project the success that you're mentioning. That's phenomenal. Again, 500,000. Mm -hmm. As you're, you move forward, what, what are some of the ways Operation Christmas Child is continuing to, to try and make that impact? Well, not only when we think about the gifts that go in the box, those are the fun things but it's all about making an eternal impact. And so we offer a 12 lesson discipleship program called The Greatest Journey. So many of these children are having an opportunity to be discipled in the love of Christ, how to walk with Him. And then we teach them how to share their faith. And last year alone, over 502,000 children gave their heart to Jesus Christ. Just an amazing number, Irina. I mean, how are you trying to, to make a difference? Well, I just, uh, it's my story. God has changed my life. And I just, I just share what God has done and remind people that God is great and He, he loves us all. And uh, it's my privilege to do so. Yeah, I mean, we talked about it earlier, a simple hair clip, a pencil sharpener, just proof that God can take anything and really use it for His good, that He's got a, a master plan. And it's just, it's, it's nice affirmation seeing things like these uh, happen on, on a basis like this. Mm-hmm. That's right. And actually, I want to encourage people to remember to put a letter and a photo of their family in the box because that was the most loved item by far because it gave the children a, a connection, a, a sense of belonging to someone. Todd, what would you like to see people put in the boxes? Well, I'm going to piggyback on what Irina just said, but Franklin Graham would say, make sure we're praying and putting prayer in the shoebox. Some people may not understand what that means, but pray for the child, like Arena, who is going to receive that shoebox, praying that it will have that et eternal impact that I mentioned. All right, thank you very much. Todd Edwards, Operation Christmas Child Regional Manager, Irina Creek, who was impacted by one of those shoe boxes many years ago. Now, this year's drop-off dates here at TV44 will begin November 17th. As we get a little bit closer to that date, we can get you some more specific times. And stay tuned to TV44 for those times. And if you're needing shoebox supplies, your church can order them at SamaritansPurse.org. Thank you, Mark. Well, take a look at what's taking place at TV44 this week. It's a fun time of year. It's our annual Wiz Quiz tournament taping and the Wiz Quiz Fall Tournament also kicking off on TV44 this week, airing Thursdays at 9 p.m. In all, 30 high school quizzing teams are part of this season's Wiz Quiz, spanning as far south as Versailles, as far north as Riverdale and Finley, and of course many schools east and west. Every year we are amazed by the incredible intelligence of these young people. Always have to fund them. Always have. Always fun to have them in our studio. Thankful for our sponsors, including lots of QP hamburgers. Those go quickly. They're very good. It's brain food. It's brain food. Got a little protein that. in there. Get you going, and it's fun to see uh, what uh, what our youth can do for us. Coming soon to the TV44 studios. It's this year's annual Pastors Breakfast, sponsored by WTGN. Gifts of joy in WTLW TV 44. Now this is the same pastor's breakfast that has been held in past years at the old barn out back. This year, same green event, a promise of wonderful food, but a new location right here at TV 44. This year's event date is Saturday, or I'm sorry, Thursday, October 30th, 
start time 8.30 a.m. on Thursday, October 30th. We are looking forward to hosting you. If you're in ministry, we call this the annual pastor's breakfast, but really it's a ministry breakfast. So if that describes your profession or your lifestyle, get your tickets today. Just $10 gets you a full hot breakfast. Gifts of Joy always gives lots of giveaways, incredible selection of free books from Parable Bookstores. And Philip Yancey going to be sharing with us. Often, it's a great event. I just love being a part of this. You've been a part of it for several years. It really is. We have an opportunity to pray together. Of course, some great camaraderie and discussion that takes place. But you mentioned Philip Yancey, and this is an exclusive ministry opportunity to hear this talk from him. Mm. This is not something you can just go to the store and buy the DVD and then play it in your house. This is only for those who attend a parable bookstore related ministry breakfast of which that's what our breakfast is. So you really, really do want to join us. So here are all the particulars. As we mentioned, tickets $10. Purchase them by Gifts of Joy, WTGN, or here at TV44. You call the TV station and purchase tickets over the phone by credit card or by sending in a check. Deadline to reserve your seats is October 24th. It's a great gift, so consider purchasing tickets for your pastor or perhaps their spouse. And finally, here's some exciting news. You can win tickets, <laughs> free tickets. We're giving away two sets of two tickets. And here's all you have to do to enter. Email your name, phone number, and email address to faithandfriends at WTLW.com. Again, that's faithandfriends, all one word, at WTLW.com. Tell us who these tickets are for. They can be for you. They can be for your pastor. They can be for someone in your church. They can be for someone in any ministry. Just give us that information and you'll be entered into the drawing to win. Remember, October 30th, 8.30 a.m., this year's annual Ministry Appreciation Breakfast sponsored by WTGN Gifts of Joy and TV44. Plus, it's your chance to come into our own studio if you've never been here before. It's an opportunity to enjoy breakfast in our studio. You can sit in Jennifer's chair. We'll even let you do that. For $11. Oh. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it is Pastor Appreciation Month as well. So this is a great gift, perhaps, for your pastor to show them how much you appreciate what they're doing. Well, two of our own here at the TV44 ministry had a big event take place earlier this month. Last week, you saw me teach Zach how to make crepes. And now that he's a married man, maybe he is making some of those crepes for his wife. Our congratulations go out to Zach and Hannah Bowers who were married October 4th. Hannah is a director here at TV44, works in the production department. It was a beautiful wedding, lots of fun, lots of cotton candy eaten by all <laughs> as well. You missed out on the cotton candy, Mark. It was going. 16 pounds of cotton candy, is that what I heard? <laughs> no baking cotton candy though. Uh, I had considered it. I know there was bubblegum cotton candy. There was now, were the dentists waiting on site to uh, treat the patients after all the cotton candy was consumed? I, I can say, I, I don't have an answer to that one. <laughs> dentists were probably not our friends that night. We didn't invite them to the wedding. But, um, oh, it was the, a non-dentist. The, the, <laughs> the dance floor was quite hopping with young kids, and I wonder if that had something to do with the cotton candy. That was that before was the cotton candy. Those kids were going. At least two of them were that I was watching. Were those your kids? Oh, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, there was about 16 pounds of cotton candy mm. uh, consumed at this wedding. It was a fun event. It was a cold event because it was outdoors. Mm -hmm. Certainly, our congratulations to Zach and Hannah. Congratulations are also in order to former TV44 staff member John Ondo, who recently accepted an Emmy for his work on the documentary Reflections of Gomer. Jennifer talks with John about that award, plus gets a sneak peek at the latest local project for Ondo Media. Well, you've heard us mention his name quite a bit recently with the connection with the Ron Mile videos that we have been playing here on TV44 and that you can see on our website. John Ondo, what a blessing he has been for TV44 for quite a while now. We won't go into age and go back to how many years thank you. you have I appreciate been that. a part of our station. But <laughs> not only, uh, first of all, thank you so much for your work on those uh, videos memorializing. It, it was an honor. I, it, Sad to do it. He had a celebration. I mean, he had to be celebrated, and uh, so it was an honor to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, a lot of other neat things taking place. You know, John does not live in this area anymore, but certainly is continuing to make an incredible impact throughout this region. Not long ago, receiving an Emmy for his work, well, for his mastermind behind <laughs> oh, oh. the uh, Gomer documentary. Tell yeah. us about this. Well, it was exciting. Uh, we, we've, uh, my little production company in, in Columbus, we, one of the things we try to do is with these, what we call school biography projects. We did one for Elida, and then the second one we produced was for Gomer, uh, just documenting the history of a school, of a community, and uh, we produced that a year ago. 
and then uh, it was nominated for an Emmy, and we won. And it was very exciting to uh, to bring home, as we say, the hardware. <laughs> Um, TV 40, we've been nominated for multiple Emmys here at TV 44 uh, we, for other shows that we've done here. Uh, and Gin, uh, Ginger Stocky was the one who brought home the first Emmy <laughs> for TV 44 way back when, about 10 years ago, uh, for a great documentary. So uh, I, I was honored to get nominated and honored to bring back uh, a, a, the award for a local yeah. story about Gomer. So when you go through Gomer, you're going through a town that has a story that's been nominated for an Emmy. So that's pretty cool. And we have aired that here on yeah. uh, on TV 44 a few times. If you haven't had a chance to see that, of course, you can purchase the DVD from the Ondo Media website. Yeah, Gomer, uh, we have a uh, lightofmemories.com is the website. We have some of those available. And you know, the thing about it is I, I just love telling these stories. Being from this area, um, there's just something about uh, this area and the stories of these towns. You go through so many of these little towns, and I always ask, what, why is this town here? What was, why, what made this a big town 100 years ago, and it's not so big now? And Gomer's one of those examples where the highway used to go through it. They used to have a school, but it was consolidated. And those stories shouldn't be forgotten. They should be told. They should be remembered. They should be celebrated. So uh, that's some of the things we, we try to do uh, with TV44. And we appreciate so much that you, you airing the, the shows. And actually, we may have another one coming up for you pretty soon. I yeah, hope. Tell, tell us about your next project. You're moving on to another area school. We cover mm -hmm. them in sports. They're going to be part of our Wiz Quiz. And now they're going to be your next documentary. Who is this next school? One of the top, top schools in the state, actually. And again, it's, it's a smaller school. Botkins local schools and they're doing they're going through a scenario similar to what Elida did about three or four years ago. They have a, a, an older building that's been there for about 40, 50 years that's going to be torn down and they're replacing it with a brand new building. So we are going through and have been in the process all this year of documenting the history of Botkins. And you might say, well, I don't know anything about Botkins. Well, that's why you should watch this. <laughs> uh, they've got a basketball team and a huge agricultural center down there in Shelby County. And so we're producing what's going to be called the Trojan Journey. And we're going to be doing a documentary on their school. And uh, they'll be moving into their new building here in December. And then sometime next year, uh, probably by May, we will have a completed one hour documentary on their school. And uh, I'm sure they would be thrilled to have TV 44 air that because there's they're some really neat families and uh, that's down there, we'll be sharing that, so. Are you, are you finding any neat stories or any surprising things like you did? I know with the Gomer documentary, there were some funny stories in there. There's funny stories everywhere, you, you, especially when you hear people say, I met my wife at this locker, or there was another story about, you know, I got, uh, I, I, I was, uh, knocked over by what would be the superintendent of the school in sixth grade at the, you know because every <laughs> all the families are kind of connected a little bit um, and then there was a one of the, the teachers I interviewed um, actually flew with Neil Armstrong's father huh. from the airport that Neil Armstrong flew out of so it's just you know it's just such a great you just could sit down and just listen to all these stories and uh, that's just what's so fun about this. So the Botkins journey, so our, our hope is we could always do more of these. The, the sad part is we're at this, this part where um, our history, where so many of these older schools were built around the 1900s mm -hmm. and they're getting torn down for good reason because they're just, they don't do, serve mm -hmm. the purpose for education anymore, but they need to be documented and those mm -hmm. histories need to be told. So I really encourage any school system, even if the school's gone, contact us. Uh, we would love to see if there's something we can do to help you document that because we use it as fundraisers that then go back to, to to help fund the school with alumni or band or scholarships or whatever they want to do with it. And of course, when the when the school building's still up, you can go through. Oh and, yeah. But even if it's not there, you can do things with pictures. You can Absolutely. do things with stories or ways to bring that back. Absolutely. To life. Uh, there, there, Ken Burns did nothing but photos of the Civil War and and really kind of brought it back to life. And and our goal is always to walk the halls of your school. Yeah or church or community center, whatever, one more time. It, 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 again, it's just there's so much to our country and, to, and so much to, to West Central Ohio here. Uh, we shouldn't lose these memories. These buildings, yes, they may have to come down, but we shouldn't lose the memories. So that's one of the things we try real hard to, to preserve. And uh, we just got blessed with, uh, with an Emmy with one of them. So that was kind yes. of a, a nice little benefit from the whole thing. Well, the, the, the work you did was deserving of it. Well, fabulous, thanks. fabulous story. Um, looking forward to seeing the Botkins one. And then if there's some more to come, only I good would, stuff. You really do incredible I, job. I would love to. Oh, I just heard that recently Memorial Hall is going to be closing down here mm -hmm. in, in Lima. And so, and I remember back in the old days, uh, uh, we did a story on that back in the, the old Turning Point days about Memorial Hall, and that's a great building. Oh, beautiful. So beautiful. again, you know, it, it's it's just important we, we document these things. All right, well, don't forget there is an opportunity to document 
keep it forever. John does an amazing job with historical things. Um, we'll see if maybe we can get that Gomer documentary back on, maybe the Elida one. We'll definitely be looking forward to the Botkins one. Thank you so much, John, My not pleasure. only for stopping by and talking to us, for everything you do to keep history going. Right, thanks so much. All right, back to you. John Ando does incredible work, a well-deserved award for him. Well, something special coming to Union Chapel Missionary Church next week. It's called Fuse, Uniting and Igniting. Six events starting Sunday through Wednesday bring together local area pastors and you're invited to attend. I love this. Fuse begins Sunday, October 19th. Buck Sutton of Teams for Christ speaking at 8.15 and 10.45 in the morning. Then Sunday night, Michael Lyons from In Faith Ministries speaking from 1 Corinthians 12 and Ephesians 1 and 4. The week continues with Doug Boquist Monday night, October 20th at 7. Levi Collins the following night at 7 and wraps up Wednesday the 22nd with Nathan Branham. That service also at 7 p.m. Local pastors each teaching on a topic surrounding the church as a whole with an overall goal of helping complete the rehabilitation of an actual church location. That's right. All offerings from next week's Fuse event will benefit St. James Missionary Baptist Church, which is under rehabilitation. The church, located at the corner of Franklin and Harrison Streets here in Lima, hopes to open the doors to the neighborhood by the end of the year. Now to the topic of the devil, which mm. is Bill Fo Harris's focus for his four-part series this month on the show, Update. Before his wedding, Zach sat down with Bill to discuss why this topic is so important, one Christians should not ignore. We're back here to finish up uh, your series, your up upcoming fourth part of your series of The Devil Exposed. Mm -hmm. And last time we talked um, about the first two sections of your series, which is um, the ultimate deceiver and then also how Satan, the origins, he sinned mm -hmm. from the beginning. And so last week you talked about the authority we have in your, in your program. And then this week will be the ultimate demise or the future yeah. of Satan. So catch us up from the third week and exactly what authority we have over Satan. Well, we have all authority and Jesus has given us the keys. And Jesus gained those keys when he was in hell. Uh, sometimes when we talk about the death of Christ, we don't go far enough. Not only did he die for us, Zach, he went to hell for us. And in, second, and in Colossians, rather, the second chapter, he actually gained uh, the victory while he was in hell. And he walked over to the devil, you know, and said, hey, the keys to death and hell, mm -hmm. turn them over. Right. And now the devil doesn't have the keys to his own home. <laughs> and so he has turned those keys over to us. We have authority over Satan. It's just that sometimes we cower and we don't understand because we don't get into the word of God to know the power and authority that we mm. have as Christians. And so I think you hit on it right there. It's one thing to know we have the authority. How do we exercise the authority? Yeah. We exercise it through faith and through using the word of God. Do you know that Satan has to acknowledge the word of God? Now he takes it sometimes and he twists mm. it around, but you see how Jesus used the word, the correct version of right. the word of God uh, toward him when he was in the wilderness. We also have the blood of Jesus. And sometimes when we're faced with imminent danger and the like, we can say, I plead the blood. I, Lord, I ask you to cover me with your blood so that I am protected from this imminent danger. Hmm. This is another, another tool that we have to protect ourselves. But the word of God is, is, I think, foremost what we need to use. Yeah, and so that was from last week. The second and third parts of your series really dealt with Satan once he was cast down here on earth and his rule on earth here. And then the last part of your, of your series is going to deal with his ultimate demise, yes. the final judgment for Satan yes. and what we can expect from that. And so what does scripture tell us? Well, scripture tells us that unlike us as human beings who have redemption set for us when we accept Christ, there is no redemption for Satan. Mm. And so he will meet his final end. And in Revelation chapter 20, you will see his obituary because he will be thrown into the lake of fire along with the beast, who is actually the Antichrist, hmm. and the false prophet. Th that's the un unholy trinity. Satan, the Antichrist, or the beast, mm -hmm. and the false prophet. They will be thrown into the lake of fire, and the Bible says that they will be there forever and ever. That's God's ultimate definition of death, to hmm. be ultimately separated from God. So why would anybody in this world, Zach, want to serve or be on the side of a defeated foe, someone that's not going anywhere. Right. We need to be on the side of Jesus Christ. Absolutely. <laughs> and so you talk about in your program, a couple of events going to lead up to that point that 
it almost gets worse before yes, it, that ultimate it judgment takes place. And, and this leads into a series that I want to teach on next month, mm. and that would be on the end times. But we see that as we go ahead into Satan's future, there will come a time when Jesus will come back for his 1,000 year millennial reign, mm. where Satan will be bound for 1,000 years, and there will be perfect peace. Jesus will show the world the perfect peace that he talked about when he was here the last time. Mm. So when he comes, there's this 1,000 years of perfect peace as he is bound in the pits of hell. Then the Bible says plainly he will be released for a season. This is his last desperate attempt to try to convince the world to turn against God and back to him. Hmm. And then ultimately God will bring him into judgment and throw him into the lake of fire and we will reign with Jesus Christ hmm. forever and ever. Uh, and you reference revelations there and you talk uh, they pull some out of Isaiah, also the first judgment ever passed down to him, I yes. think originally when he was cast yeah. down to earth. Uh -huh. And then th th you have five things the devil is condemned to be. He's condemned to be defeated, overthrown, humiliated, disgraced, and debased. Aren't you glad? <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. So again, you want to be on the winning side. Right. And that's with Jesus Christ. We are the winners. As I tell people sometimes, I know who's going to win. I read the last chapter of the right. Bible. <laughs> right, right. Amen. So that's what we can expect out of the series. You mentioned that you are working on a new series coming up maybe next month. Yes. Can you give us a little preview of that? A little preview. Rather than trying to deal with all of the chronology of the end times, because there's so much and we couldn't possibly deal with it in just five, sec uh, five shows, I want to take certain key events. I'm not sure yet. I'm in prayer before the Lord about this. Mm. Certain key events and expand on those to really open the eyes of viewers to see, you know, we are getting close to the Lord's return. Mm -hmm. Hear more on this topic by watching Update with Bill Harris Sundays at 1.30 and Thursdays at 9 a.m. Well, before we close our show, we want to share some of this week's prayer requests with you. A viewer in Allen County asks us to pray for her unsaved adult children. We actually get that request quite often. A viewer in Mercer County has a praise thanking God for healing on his shoulder. All right. Prayer requests also from several asking for help in fighting temptation. And a woman in Putnam County asking for prayers as she has family members looking for employment. Andy, would you take a moment to pray for these requests? I certainly will. Father, we bring all these requests before you, uh, before your throne, and they are like fragrance to you as you mm -hmm. hear the request of your people. And you want to heal, you want to save. Uh, Lord, we pray that you do that with these individuals, with all those around us that are hurting and don't know you. We thank you for the praises, how a shoulder can be healed and how lives can be changed because of your power and because of your spirit and your grace. And we pray that upon our viewing audience and these folks here today. We thank you that you hear us and that you change your mind when we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Of course, you can always request this and share prayer requests with us via email, mail, or telephone. Our email is prayer, our email, a prayer line is always open, WTLW.com, and requests can remain anonymous. But before we go, we want to remind you of this week's ticket giveaway. Two sets of two tickets for four tickets in all to our upcoming Pastor's Breakfast, sponsored by WTGN, Gifts of Joy, and TV44. Prayer will be taking place at that event, which is October 30th, 8.30 a.m. Location right here at the TV44 studios. Email faithandfriends at WTLW.com. To enter. And we want to say congratulations to the winner of last week's ticket giveaway to the Ernie Haas and Signature Sound Broad Inspirations on Broadway concert. The winner is Kim Myers, who said her favorite Bible verse is Philippians 4, Philippians 4.13. And Andy, she thinks strawberries on crepes are yum. That is exactly right. In crepes, you can put them on too, with a little sauce on top and then maybe a little whipped cream. I like throwing that on there. So I agree. Good, good call, Kim. Finally now, our recap for the scripture of the day comes from Matthew 25, 35 through 40. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. I certainly encourage you to reflect on this this week and ponder how you can reach out to others and in fact, doing so for Christ. I also want to dedicate that verse to uh, Pastor Robert Farrell who passed away earlier this month, father to Pam Martin who works with us here at TV44. We're certainly thankful for all he did, just like that verse said, for so many people in this region for so many years. Question about it. 
That's it for us this week. Thanks for joining us. Remember, you can view more segments at our website, WTLW.com. Email us any comments anytime. Have a good week, everyone.